welcome back now. Vladimir Putin calling the Turkish president yesterday afternoon, and the conversation was to lay out Moscow's demand and conditions for a peace deal with Ukraine. Advisors saying the demands basically broke down into two categories, and one of them was having a face-to-face -face meeting with Putin and Zelensky. Joining us now from Moscow with the latest details is correspondent Stuart Smith. That's right. This information comes from an advisor who was listening in to that phone call between President Putin and President Erdogan on Wednesday. There, he said the two leaders discussed uh, broadly two categories of uh, points that must be addressed with Ukraine. The first fall into some kind of neutral status for Ukraine and demilitarization. It's not clear exactly what those terms mean yet, with Ukraine and Russia both having different ideas about what the future for Ukraine may hold. For example, Russia would like to see certain limits on Ukrainian forces, what equipment can be deployed on the country, and in return it says Russia will consider Ukraine no longer a threat. But to do that, uh, Vladimir Zelensky has previously talked about needing guarantees from other countries that they would be allowed to come and help if Ukraine considers Russian aggression a possibility again, and therefore uh, he would not be able to accept any kind of demilitarization or neutral status without those guarantees. So that's one sticking point. The other revolves around territory. For example, what happens to the self-declared autonomous regions in Ukraine's east, the Donbass and Lukansk regions, which Russia says are now their own independent entities. Ukraine still says they're Ukrainian. And then, of course, Crimea, annexed by Russia in 2014, eight years ago to this day when the Crimean residents, Russia says, chose to join Russia to reunify. And that was celebrated today here in Moscow at a, conf uh, at a concert at the Luzhniki Stadium where the 2018 FIFA World Cup was held there. The president spoke about, again, his reasons for this so-called special military operation, which is the only phrase we can use here in Moscow to describe what's going on. He said it's all about stopping the genocide in the Donbass region. Those are the goals and that Russia will be victorious. He said to a crowd of around 100,000 people, according to Moscow city authorities, surrounded by blue, white and red flags and phrases like for the president, for freedom, for Russia and for denazification. Back to you. A carefully worded report, Stuart Smith. We do appreciate that update. Joining me now to discuss a bit more of this is former Trump 2016 foreign policy advisor and Newsmax contributor, George Papadopoulos. George, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Bianca. All right, first, I uh, want to get a read on your take. Uh, Putin has this call uh, with the president of Turkey, he kind of lays out what he's looking for. Um, one of them was, you know, not to join NATO, which Zelensky had already ceded to, calls for um, disarmament, still talking about denazification, George, uh, and says he wants to sit down and meet with Zelensky. Can we believe Putin? Can we believe that he's actually going to sit across the table from Zelensky? And also, how would Zelensky convince his people to do any of this when they are so... Um, they are so convinced and so, you know, determined to fight till their death. Uh, I think uh, that Zelensky is between a rock and a hard place, uh, unfortunately, in this uh, prospective uh, peace talk uh, in uh, Turkey, because uh, while this uh, war is uh, escalating, we're about three weeks into this war, and it's uh, tremendously escalating with the Russians now bombing western Ukraine, uh, essentially 10 miles from a NATO country, uh, Poland, many Americans today are asking themselves if President Biden was unable to oversee a successful mission in Afghanistan against the Taliban, can he really take on Russia and potentially both Iran and China simultaneously? And this has actually created a vacuum of leadership, which Turkey has now attempted to fill with these peace talks. And Turkey is a very interesting country. And the reason I say that Zelensky is between a rock and a hard place is because Turkey, while it is NATO's second largest military power, it is the only country in NATO which has yet to sanction Russia, and it has purchased large and sophisticated Russian weapon systems over the last couple of mm -hmm. years, and Erdogan and Putin have excellent relations. So is Turkey really a neutral country in this conflict? That's yet to be seen, considering these very close ties between the NATO power and Russia. But it looks like Zelensky is attempting to bring in the West as much as possible. Now, I've been very vocal, and I think many would agree that it's not in the American interest to send American boots and to have Americans die in Ukraine. But Ukraine does need defensive weapons. It does need Western support. Sanctions do need to be ramped up against Russia. 
But when you do have this type of meeting going on in Turkey, what Joe Biden should be doing is talking to the Turkish president for him to escalate sanctions and to stop buying Russian weapons. I think that would be a really good start. Well, we know that where he was this morning. He was on that call with President Xi. Um, early, early reports coming out about that call, and they are from China, so they're not from a White House. Uh, George is not a White House official. Is that uh, the Ukrainian crisis, according to China, is something that we don't want to see, and they'd like to steer China-U.S. relations forward? Uh, the call lasted about an hour and 50 minutes. Obviously, there's so much uh, at stake with this. This is, you know, can we make China? Uh, come to our side instead of having it be more strengthened, the friendship with no limits, as we saw their, um, their statement coming out with Putin. So a lot at stake with this call. Do you think it went the way President Biden wanted it to? I think uh, China believes that its geopolitical prospects uh, are going to be tremendously improved by marrying their uh, massive industrial might with uh, formidable Russian energy reserves. And I think you need to really look and case point in what China and Russia are really attempting to do here at the global level. Both China and Russia are essentially creating this axis of autocracy along with Iran to a lesser extent in which they would like to essentially remove American power from East Asia, Europe and the Middle East. Just before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Russia and China signed a deal of, to the tune of $120 billion. Now China has yet to even call this war a war or condemn Russia at the UN Security Council. So whatever China and uh, the Biden representatives discussed today, it will not uh, prevent China to secure its own natural in, uh, interests, which are to reduce the American footprint in East Asia, Central Asia, and Eastern Europe. That, and this that, is something that Russia and China are working to come to a, a result on. That is their goal. Um, before we let you go, I uh, want to show that clip of President Putin, George, uh, out with massive crowds, uh, people have questioned his unpredictability, his mental stability. He had that very emotional long speech on Wednesday calling up uh, the oligarchs traitors, scum. And then you see him with the crowds there, you know, digging in saying, we will win this war. You know, he has not used chemical weapons, uh, but some say, you know, the fact that he's so much more isolated and now we're calling him a war criminal, that anything is possible. What do you think of his mental s mindset right now? First and foremost, I think it would be a, a historic mistake to assume that autocracy is the future of Russia. I think that Putin, while he's a man of war and nationalism, he's also a man who's tremendously miscalculated. And uh, what his war in Ukraine has essentially done is it's coalesced the West against Russia and the sanctions that have been imposed today on Russia are going to start to permeate within Russian society. Russian society today, there might be some people who are rallying the flag. You don't know if they're doing this because uh, they're intimidated or forced to do this, considering that thousands of people today in Russia are now being arrested for standing up to the Russian autocrat. But I think that what the West should be doing in conjunction with supporting Ukraine in the defensive posture is supporting democracy seekers and freedom loving Russian citizens who are just simply bystanders of this Putin war against Ukraine. And this is something that the West should be focusing on. And we cannot assume that the future of Russia is Putin or somebody like him. I, I hear you, George. There's a lot of protesters there being not afraid to speak up, even though they're facing jail. George Papadopoulos, thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you, Bianca. You too. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.